So the last thing that we need to do is to make sure that our Next.js project is deployed to Vercel. Now what I've done is I've edited my gitignore file and I'll edit the .env variable because I don't want to uh, I don't want to necessarily deploy that. Um, you know, we could, but there's another way to add environment variables in Vercel, and we're going to be just uh, using that. The other thing that I've done was to create an empty repository. So now I am going to push everything to GitHub. So I'm going to say git add dot, just make sure everything go edit, and now execute those four commands from GitHub. Hit refresh, and now the entire project is up here on GitHub, that's great. So we're going to be deploying to Vercel from GitHub and I will go to vercel.com and I'm going to just very simply click start deploying and then I'm going to select continue with GitHub. So when you do this, you have to go through a few authentication steps. Uh, please go ahead and do that. And once you've gone through those steps, you will notice that you have access to your GitHub repositories. If you don't, then you can add the GitHub account, authorize Vercel. But once you go through those steps, at some point in time, you should see the projects that you have. And here's Gemstack Training Films UI. So I'm going to just import this one. And this is the place where you would configure how to build your next project, or in other words, how to create a production build of your next project. Now, because Next.js is a product of Vercel, everything is going to be super easy, right? So here's a framework preset. You could, you know, uh, just so that you know, you can deploy any of these to Vercel that you see here. But, you know, of course, we are selecting Next.js here. Um, build and output settings, we really don't need to change that. Uh, you can override these default ones, but the defaults will be just fine. And of course, we will need some environment variables. So you can see uh, we have the variable with a value, then press add. So make sure that you add the strapi URL and the three cloudinary uh, details as well. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then we're going to press the deploy button and see what happens. All right, so I've added all the environment variables, all four of them, and now I'm going to press on deploy. And the deployment is going to be placed in a queue, build will start, some checks will be done, and then we're going to get a custom domain from Vercel, which is going to be the final resting place for our application. So let's wait until this process is going to finish. And after getting this nice little confetti animation, we are now deployed. So here's a preview of our project, which is great. We can go to the dashboard to see information about the deployment, you know, take a look at function, function logs, build logs. So we can go through the logs uh, that were created just to make sure that there were no real errors in here. So I don't see uh, any. I really like this uh, piece of information here that I'm highlighting because I did talk to you about, you know, static generation, server-side generation, you know, with the various methods like get initial props, get static props, so on and so forth. And now you can actually see which pages were run with what mode, right? So we can see that the profile page has this little lambda icon, meaning that it's a server-side render. Whereas the about page, for example, was automatically rendered as static HTML because there were no initial properties. Okay, so it's just an interesting uh, uh, thing to see about you know how Versa is deploying that, and we also probably left some console log statements in place, but that's um, fine for now. So let's go and visit this site. So I'm going to press on visit. And this now opens our application in a new tab. So let's click films. And here we have our films coming from Strapi. We can do pagination. We can click on any of these. And that is going to load the plot for this film. So let's register a user.
and the registration was successful. And if we go to profile, we should be able to see Steve right here. So our good old buddy Steve is now in production. So let's choose a file and upload this image as a profile image for Steve. So that's going to be the same image uh, that I have used. So hopefully this is now going to be sent to Cloudinary and there it is. Let's go to episode four, for example. Now that we're logged in, we can add the review. And the review has now been added. So we get exactly the same functionality, but now running in production on Vercel. And I'm just going to log out and the review is now gone. And that's also the end of our course. So just to recap what we've done, we basically set up a headless CMS locally on our machines. And that headless CMS is called Strappy. We then explored how that we then explored how Strappy manages data, how it manages users, how it handles authentication and how it allows you to consume data. We then developed an entire application using Next.js where we talked about pages and parameterized pages. We talked about the user provider and this whole auth context. We then fixed a very important bug and we relied on strappies slash API slash users slash me endpoints to verify if someone is actually logged in as opposed to just relying on the cookies. We talked about JSON web tokens for authentication. We talked about how to register and how to log in users using Strappy and Next.js. And last but not least, we have deployed the headless CMS to Heroku and our Next.js instance to Vercel. And now what you saw in the last couple of minutes was a live demo running in production on both of these environments. So I hope you enjoyed this course. I would like to thank Strappy for sponsoring this course and I'll see you in a next Jamstack training course. Have fun with the Jamstack. Thank you.